Hello and welcome to this Unity 3D HD render pipeline tutorial. Um, I'll be using the latest beta version because that has the most features. And uh, considering what's already in there, I think it's nearing completion. So to get started, just create a new project. Once inside the project, just go into Window, Package Manager, and find HD render pipeline in here. I'm gonna use the latest version and hit install. Once installed, what you need to do is create a HD render pipeline asset. Uh, go into edit, project settings, graphics, and put that asset here. Now go into project settings, and as the error suggests, player, and ch change the color space to linear. Okay, once that's done, just restart Unity because there's a um, couple of bugs that go away after you restart it. So once back in Unity, just go into Scene Hierarchy and create Rendering Scene Settings. As you can see, we have this fog in here. Now, if you don't do a restart, this fog just appears as black, so that's one of the bugs. Um, but so once at this point, we can start looking into the individual settings and features. So um, let's start by doing volumetric fog. Okay, so to get volumetric fog, what you need to do is go into scene settings and change the fog type to be volumetric. Now go into scene and create rendering density volume. Scale it up. And the mean free path uh, variable controls its density, so you can have it low or high. Uh, what I like to do is also change its color to be white. So it's, um, I don't know, it just looks better for me. Now what I'm going to do is create an object, some, something like a cube. And as you can see, there's this scattering effect that uh, falls in line with the object shadow. Uh, this looks very great in forest scenes or something like that, so, uh, yeah. Okay, so what I want to cover now is the new properties in the materials. So what I'm going to do is create a sphere and create a new material. So, yep. Um, there's not very many interesting things to do until you go into textures, so let's get some textures off of polygon okay so i got some new textures now and um let's just try and create this object this new material so what i'm gonna do is just add some base color i increase the tiling in y add the normals And as you can see, we get the school slider that uh, affects how much normals affect the material. Uh, and you can see, we kind of get lost now, because all we got is this mask map. Uh, we can't set our metalli metallicity and smoothness maps individually. Uh, this is due to efficiency problems. Uh, for example, the grayscale maps can be all fitted into single texture. So in this kind of texture, the red map is the metallicity, the ambient occlusion map is the green, uh, the diffuse, uh, sorry, the detail map mask, this is some advanced feature that I'm not gonna in go into this tutorial, uh, that goes into the blue channel and smoothness goes into alpha. So to do that, I'll use GIMP. Okay, so back in GIMP, what I have is the ambient occlusion and the gloss texture. Uh, this material is not metal, so that means that uh, our metallicity map will have to be just black. This is gonna be... Go into paint bucket tool, where is it? And just color it black, right? Okay, and also another layer that is the detail map mask. I'm just gonna leave it as white, okay? Uh, once I have all of my layers inside uh, here, and what I need to do is compose the colors. 
Um, now all of these are grayscale, so what I can do is simply select the uh, metallicity. I think it's the this one to go into red channel, um, change the color mask to RGBA, then go into the gloss map, which uh, is this one that goes into alpha. Uh, into the green channel goes the AO mask, which is this one, and then the white one will just simply be in the blue mask. Hit OK, and now we got this weird kind of PNG image. Um, so export as PNG. OK, and now we have an efficient representation of our texture, which we can use in Unity. OK, so now back in Unity, just go into texture and mark it as alpha is transparency. Right? OK. Now go into the material and add it into the appropriate slot. As you can see, our material looks a lot better now, a lot more realistic. Um, another thing that I want to cover is a bit uh, is all of the options I've got in here. So bent map, um, this is almost never used, and a lot of the CJ artists don't really know what it is. But it's it's simply the AO directional AO map. So that means that the ambient occlusion map, which you probably know what it is. Um, it's directionally dependent, so if you look at it from one spot, the light might be able to make it escape from it. If you look from the other spot, it's going to be occluded, but um, it's not very often used. Coast coat mask provides it a thin film simulation, so that thin film is sort of like a index of refraction of one, so that's like water. As you can see, if you increase it to one, it looks like it's kind of white. Um, another thing that I kind of want to go into is the GPU instancing. If you enable it, the material will only be, all of the materials will be drawn with one draw call. So you can have like um, very complicated objects, like, I don't know, palaces or something like that, and you can have a lot of them. But if you enable GPU instancing and they have only one material, it's going to be one draw call and it's going to be quick to render them. Um, also the displacement mode, um, if you have like a flat surface or, or even a sphere actually, you can use pixel displacement. Uh, otherwise you should use vertex displacement. Vertex displacement displace, displaces vertices and pixel displacement is run for each pixel. Um, if you enable it, the height map appears in which I can just put the displacement map. Uh, sorry, that's bent normal. Displacement map, okay, and now you can see the material looks as if it's got a deeper, deeper crevices, um, kind of too deep for my taste. So I think, I think this looks kind of good. And right, that's about all I wanted to cover with the basic material. Okay. Oh, I uh, almost forgot to touch on smoothness remapping and ambient occlusion remapping. So in real world, nothing really has smoothness of 1 or 0. Um, so what Unity has provided is the scale that you can adjust to select the maximum and the minimum value of smoothness right here to finely tune your materials. Uh, same with ambient occlusion, for example. I think it looks way too bright, so what I can do is just decrease that, and now I think it looks a lot better. Um, going into different sorts of materials, what I want to do is uh, highlight the anisotropy shader, and I think that's best done if I create a, a, a cylinder, right? And if I make this material to behave as a metal, uh, make it metallic, bring down the smoothness a bit, it doesn't really look right for me. I don't know, maybe it does for you, but... Uh, in real life, what I think uh, happens is that uh, metals like this, depending on their shape, reflect light differently. So what you can do is reflect, uh, change how the light is reflected. So for example, um, this bright stripe usually is along its length. So what you can do is change it to that. And now I think the cylinder looks a lot better. Another type of material I want to cover is the transparent material. 
so I've already set up this uh, test scene. So what you do is simply change the surface type to transparent, uh, then make sure the pre-refraction pass is not enabled. Uh, change its opacity to be something less, like uh, I have mine at 66, then go into transparency inputs and for the refraction model I've used the sphere um, because that's the shape of my object but there's only really two that you can select, plane or a sphere. Um, Going into SS Ray model, the one that works for me is the proxy one, and what you can then do is change the index of refraction. Now, if you change it too high, what you get is the total internal uh, reflection, I think, so it just reflects everything that comes into it. So um, you kind of have to keep it lower than you might expect from the real world values. Um, yeah, so around here maybe. And I have another effect going in here, and that is the distortion vector map. Now, the distortion vector is basically just the map of vectors um, in two directions in which the light is distorted relative to the normal. Um, now it's kind of hard to make so what I've done is just for testing I've used this uh, normal map and B channel in that uh, normal map in this distortion map is the blur effect. Um, blur effect can also be remapped as you can see there are some patterns occurring uh, in this new type of materials. And yeah so that's about all of the interesting options that I've, I've seen in the transparent materials. Okay, so finally the two types of materials left are subsurface scattering and translucent. Now, subsurface scattering is sort of the same as translucent, but it's more accurate but more expensive, so I'm only gonna cover this one. Um, so once you create the material, you also need to create a rendering diffusion profile settings. Uh, and put those distribution profile settings into, sorry, not here, um, HDRP settings. Uh, yep, sorry. Okay, now what I'll do is create some sort of a skin-like refraction. Now I've played around with the settings a bit and this is the ones I found uh, work the best for me. So this is what I used for the color, for the thickness, for the ind index of refraction, etc, etc. Uh, once you have those settings, yeah, and set them in here, um, then all you need to do is apply that to your material. Change its type to subsurface scattering. Uh, yep. And go into base color and. Uh, no, sorry, go into surface type and change it to transparent. Okay, so that actually took a while, but what you need to do now is simply change its diffusion profile to be the one you've made, and now changing the, sorry, thickness, you can see the effect of subsurface scattering. Okay, so that's all I wanted to do with the materials. Okay, so the last few mentions that I want to make is the HD shadow settings and scene settings. Um, normally it's set, I think, to thousand and you can see shadows sort of get buggy at that distance. Uh, what you might want to make is set it to a lower value. Okay so I've covered some of the features of HD render pipeline. Hopefully some of these helped. Uh, hopefully it's enough to get you started. Um, thanks for watching and goodbye.